we've just heard from Number 10 confirmation that Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, has been officially sacked by Number 10. She was asked to leave government by Rishi Sunak this morning and she has accepted. That is what Number 10 are telling us. Obviously, this reshuffle, we were told just moments ago, has started within Downing Street. We should be seeing ministers coming up and down the famous Number 10 Street within minutes, I'm sure. And obviously, it's going to be, you know, all eyes on whoever is going to be replacing Suella Braverman after those controversial comments she made to the Times newspaper last week. Number 10 then admitted that the they were not authorised uh, by them. They were not signed off. She basically was freelancing. She went quite far in that very, very punchy article where she accused the Met Police of being biased. So yes, all eyes on who her replacement right be might be. We're hearing names like Robert Jenrick, Victoria Atkins, the Treasury Minister. We're also hearing bigger, bigger names like James Cleverly, like Michael Gove, who could be stepping in to, to, to replace her. Has um, he now created a martyr for the right wing of the Conservative Party, Natasha? I think... There is a core group of supporters of Suella Braverman, but I think they're probably smaller than we think. I think maybe 20 to 30 really hardcore Suella Braverman supporters will obviously be very upset about the sacking and I'm sure will be filling up our airwaves on LBC uh, today, uh, telling us why this is a huge mistake from the Prime Minister to sack her. And obviously it comes just two days before this Rwanda ruling, yes. which we knew was going to set the two up for a clash. We know that Rishi Sunak and Suella Braverman disagree on leaving the ECHR. This will give Suella Braverman a reason to essentially go out and say, look, I was right about the weekend's protests. I said that they should should have stopped been happening and obviously I've been proved right. But also on Rwanda, it will give her the chance to say, well, if the government do lose, then she will be able to say, look, we have no choice. We have to leave the ECHR. Rishi Sunak will not be able to do anything to stop her. Is she positioning herself to be the next leader of the opposition? I think she would like to be, absolutely. I think, you know, look at the way that she, you know, her controversial comments have only stepped up in recent months and, you know, you've only seen this last couple of weeks with her comments on protests, with her comments on the homeless. Um, I think that she knows that she is a particularly controversial character. She obviously thinks that she is speaking her mind. She thinks that she represents quite a lot of people uh, out there in the country. Um, but yes, I think she could potentially now be a thorn in Rishi Sunak's side every day until the next 12 months when we expect an election to be called. And if Rishi Sunak does lose, she will be one of the front runners to replace him. Finally, uh, and I sense we might see you again in the next hour anyway, as you run in and out with any bits of news, but had there not been the violence, mostly far-right violence, I want to stress that, had there mostly not been the far-right violence we saw on Saturday, do you think Suella Baravman would still be in post, Natasha, or is that really the the spark? I think that this obviously was a long time coming. Rishi Sunak has been uh, frustrated with Suella Baravman behind the scenes, I think, for a long time, and though the, two, though the two do agree on lots of things, I think he has been frustrated that she has not been towing the line in recent weeks and months and obviously there are so many times that you can uh, accept that, you can forgive it but I think with Suella Braverman the, the problem was that she was only going to get louder and louder towards the next election and Rishi Sunak was eventually going to have to take this action and stamp his authority at some point. Right, We're just hearing as well um, James Cleverley's in Downing Street that could tell you all you need to know about who the Home Secretary may be. She should never have been appointed in the first place. Let's not forget that she, the last time she was sacked as Home Secretary was for a national security leak five days before Rishi Sunak reappointed her to the job. He knew then that she was unfit for office. He appointed her out of weakness. He's delayed sacking her out of weakness. He's a prisoner of the right wing of his party. And where I disagree with your last caller, Steve, there, is that the police have been warning government for years that they need new powers and new laws to tackle hateful extremism. They did that in 2019 and 2021 in a report written by Mark Rowley, who is obviously the commissioner of the Metropolitan Police now, and the government have failed to act. And what Suella Braverman did in undermining policing last week was utterly unacceptable. And the only dis added disgrace is that it took five days for weak Rishi Sunak to act. But lastly, before we move on to the uh, how the Labour would have more NHS appointments, lastly on this, if he's a prisoner of the right, Mr Streeting, why is he biffed her out? Well, I think he's ultimately been left with no choice. I mean, this morning she was almost goading him. I saw Home Office sources reported as calling number 10 clowns. I mean, this is the level of petty name calling that's going on. But he should never have appointed her in the first place. He should never have kept her on. And at this late stage of the fag end of this government, it's not just a change of faces around the cabinet table we need. It's a change of government. Rishi Sunak doesn't have a mandate. And he ought to ask the country now whether they're happy for this rabble to carry on misgoverned 
governing or whether they would prefer a fresh start with Labour. This is uh, the big moment for Rishi Sunak. He has to go to the country for a general election sometime next year and this is the putting down of the chess pieces to make sure he's got the best team possible Uh, and therefore he will have a long list of people that he wants to move. Some will be sacked, some will voluntarily leave government, Uh, others will be promoted. It's about presenting a new and fresh but critically loyal face uh, to, to, to the country, loyal to Rishi, of course, because Rishi's biggest problem for many has been that he's not really had full control of the broad church of the Conservative Party, and now is his time to act. Now, the difficulty is on that whiteboard that they will have uh, in one of the rooms in number 10 with all the different names and seats and places, uh, some people might refuse to move. <laughs> some people might say, I ain't going, uh, and you're going to have to force me out. And their leverage is that they've got a whole bunch of Conservative MPs who are their supporters. And uh, Rishi has to be very, very diplomatic as he has to go around uh, moving the chess pieces, because if somebody refuses to budge, then it can knock on uh, the rest of the reshuffle, and then he has to very quickly uh, put different people into different places. So it's a very high, tense moment of fragility. There's great risk uh, when you reshuffle, because if you don't get it right, uh, you can put so many enemies on the back benches whose noses are out of joint that you cause more problems than you began with. George, if you'll allow that Suella Bravman is very much to the right wing of the party, how much of a chunk of the party is Mr Sunak now at odds with? Well, I would say that it's impossible for anybody really to lead the Conservative Party successfully right now. It's a bit true of the Labour Party as well. There's so many broad views. But uh, Rishi is seen as centrist uh, by many Conservative MPs, and a lot of them are like, are happy with that. They see him as responsible. Uh, and, and good for the economy, but a lot of Conservatives on the right and a growing number who are becoming candidates at the next general election are much more to the right. They're economically to the right. They don't think the state should be as big as it has become under Rishi. Uh, and there is a sort of fight for the soul of the Conservative Party underway. Um, let's have a word on, you probably heard that David Cameron has arrived at number 10. Now, of course, this is pure speculation, George, but A, how did you react when you heard the news? B, what might be going on? with him behind the door of number 10? Well, of course, lots of people are speculating that the former Prime Minister could have been brought back in to be given the job uh, in government, in Rishi's cabinet, uh, something like a foreign secretary or some such. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to see that happening uh, straight away. There's been no speculation about it. And, of course, Rishi Sunak was not a member of parliament until 2015, only a year before David Cameron stopped being the Prime Minister. So... They don't know each other particularly well, um, and there may be other reasons why David Cameron's gone in there. Quick overview, lastly. Are you surprised by the timing? You'll be aware the Rwanda decision is a couple of days off. If it goes against the government, a lot of people, and I'm happy to put my hand up here, would have thought that you'd hold on for Suella and wait for that to go away. George? I think that's right, but I think the, the tension and the heat is so great and that Rishi has to take bold decisions. Don't forget, his whole party conference speech was about he being the change manager, Mr. Change. And to be consistent to that, you have to take big, bold decisions to prove to people you're not going to be put off. There's never a right time to sack a Home Secretary. It's always very, very challenging. And really, I think he's come down to the decision, I've got to do the right thing for me in my government, whatever happens on Wednesday.